Hello everyone, my name is Pixorifs and welcome back to the Minecraft Survival Guide. I hope you guys are having a good day. The moon is rising in the distance and I am once again back at the Creeper Farm for a very quick update because I had some great comments at the end of the last episode when it came to my conundrum about what to do with the Creeper Farm and I have tried out a variety of methods to get that top platform of creepers to actually behave properly and to have them all walk off the platform because they weren't before and it was frustrating me and I have tried a number of methods suggested by some folks in the comments as you can see the farm itself is running pretty well we got lots of creepers running off of the platforms so first thing what I did I swapped out the edges of the top platform with spruce buttons instead of spruce trapdoors because that was just consistent for the whole look of the farm buttons or trapdoors usually seem to work either way mobs will recognize them as full blocks and attempt to walk on them when they can't and in the case of open trapdoors, that means that they can fall through. In the case of buttons, they have no actual walk-on kind of surface in any case. So those creepers are just wandering off the platform now. The next thing I did was actually to the roof, and I'm going to switch over to my camera account here because as you can see, that is now all slabs, which for a start means that I save materials and I, spe I don't spend as much time lighting the whole thing up with torches. But also, I was thinking that maybe some of the solid blocks in the roof were actually showing up as mo uh, as blocks that the mobs could pathfind to and that was potentially what was causing the issue. A couple of people in the comments backed me up on that and thought that that was what was going on as well and I swapped the entire thing out with stone brick slabs which took quite a while but as you can see we are still getting the same issue <laughs> occasionally and it has happened a little bit more consistently that they do walk off the platform. Like you can see when a fresh group spawns in usually a few of them will walk off and considering that I am within range of this platform now there are actually it's actually allowing the creepers to walk around a little bit and that prompts them to walk off the edge if they find the right angle on which to do so. The third suggestion was to add this extra ring of solid blocks, which of course I've had to spawn proof with trapdoors to make sure that the creepers didn't just appear on top of these blocks. But even that has led to them still getting stuck here and there. That was a suggestion prompted by the same kind of line of thinking really was that the mobs on the three bottom platforms were actually able to detect this ring around the outside and that was causing them to walk off thinking it was something that they could pathfind to. So I added an additional ring of blocks around the outside here, spawn proof them with the trapdoors so that nothing could spawn on there and then that wouldn't have any kind of cause to, uh, to walk off. And as you can see, we still get the issue. I don't know what it is at this point, like occasionally, yeah, they will do a, a quick turnaround and they will pathfind themselves off the platform, but sometimes we do still get creepers just hanging out on the edge of here, not going anywhere. It's a shame, but it happens. I think it may be something to do with the maximum distance they want to run away from a cat, and I could decrease the size of the spawning platform if I wanted to, or some people have even suggested adding ice to the edges of the platform so that the creepers will like slip off once they reach the edge of the platform, which is fine, but still doesn't really explain why the creepers on the three platforms below are behaving precisely as intended. They all just walk off more or less immediately, and I don't understand why still, but as far as these things go, I'm pretty happy with the output of this farm. As I've said, I've got a whole bunch of gunpowder in the chests over here now, and I think we're probably going to leave it for the time being. But thank you so much for all of the uh, advice, all of the helpful comments you folks left. It was really cool to get a little bit more insight into what might be happening here, even if the results haven't really changed all that much. And we still have one whole heap of gunpowder in the chests down here, ready to be collected for fire farming for fireworks and TNT and that kind of stuff. We can always come back and get this another time. But for now, I'm going to move on from this project and I'm going to head to the nether because there has been a project that we've had in the nether for a long, long time now that is really in need of some attention. And I'm referring, of course, to this. This is my nether hub, or it should be. <laughs> That's the thing. My nether hub has been in progress for a while. We cleared out all of the netherrack from this area and we are erecting walls around the outside of this to make it a little bit more ghast proof and so forth but we haven't really done a whole heap with the nether hub for quite a while and I really want to get started on some of this today. So today I want to do a whole heap of work in here decorating this place and to keep it in line with the tutorial kind of stuff that I like to do in this series 
I'm going to make it a tutorial about how to spawn proof areas of the nether from all mob spawns. And that will probably count towards how mob proofing works in other dimensions as well. Like you can mob proof the overworld or the end in a similar way. But let's start off by looking at the steps I've already taken in this area. And to start with, you will see that there are occasional zombie pigmen down here on the floor. But this floor is made entirely of stone slabs and now those slabs are actually at the half block height if we come over to the wall here so we can measure as you'll see from the wireframe around the blocks there or if I have a slab that I can place on top of it I can't place a slab on top of this one because as you'll see it's at the half block height already and you can't combine two different types of slabs in the same block space so what we have here is a floor made entirely out of stone slabs and that spawn proofs an area from any kind of mob spawns because typically mob spawning needs a solid block in order to take place so if we placed a stone brick block here and got 23 blocks away from it it's more than likely that something would end up spawning on top of that in the fullness of time obviously it's a small space and the way minecraft spawns mobs it checks for valid spaces in a whole bunch of different directions before deciding well that's the only place i can spawn something you'll also see that there are zombie pigmen spawning on this row of blocks around the outside of the nether hub here because that is a full solid block and that means that the pigmen can spawn up there. You might be wondering also, yep, there you go, we've got a whole pack of them up there. You might be wondering how come this chap is down here? Has he spawned on this floor? Well, no, the answer is probably not. In fact, I can almost guarantee that he didn't. Instead, what's happened is he has spawned on one of these raised walkways that I use to get to my central nether portal, or he's spawned around the outside here and has decided to pathfind off the platform, risking a little bit of fall damage in order to get to the block he wants to visit next. And so you will find occasionally that there will be zombie pigmen like that one over there, for example, who seems to have just hopped down from the wall. You'll find them in this place every now and again. And of course, we can get rid of them very easily by getting 128 blocks away. And I'm pretty sure this circle is actually about 130 something wide. So if I go all the way over here, you'll see that there are no longer zombie pigmen over there. They're not just out of render distance. They are actually completely gone because we've got 128 blocks away. We have instantly despawned them. So my game plan for this nether hub was to draw an enormous compass rose in the middle of here. And a compass rose is the decorative thing that you'll find in the corner of a map, which shows you which way north is on that map and can also be quite a, an interesting and stylized illustration in the corner of the map, usually sort of out over an ocean where there isn't all that much there. And I thought that'd be a really cool thing to have in the nether because without using the F3 debug screen, it's not really that obvious which direction north is in the nether. And I would love to be able to come out of this portal, which is otherwise a very symmetrical thing, and immediately know which direction I was going. I get disoriented in the nether quite easily, and I always think of this direction for some reason as south, when it's actually the opposite, it's north. So what I want to do is draw a giant compass rose in here. The thing is, when you're working with blocks that cannot spawn mobs, you have a relatively limited choice of blocks, and it can be quite difficult or quite boring to slab an area with a large amount of the same type of material. You have to stick to things which are not full blocks or things which are transparent blocks like leaves or glass. And until recently, I'm fairly certain glass was still spawning mobs on it occasionally as well as part of a bug that existed in earlier versions of Minecraft 1.14. So you have to pick your blocks very carefully. And so, for the majority of builds down here, if you put a solid block down here, you will need to put something on top of it which prevents spawning on that block, whether it be a carpet, a slab of some other material, a piece of glass, or something else like that. I believe redstone will still stop mobs from spawning on it, although I have been corrected a couple of times in the comments about string no longer preventing mob spawns. So we couldn't just make a solid floor of a colorful full block cover the entire thing with string and call it good. I believe it would not work that way. So what we might do instead is use a mixture of stuff like carpets. We could even use things like buttons if we wanted to, if they worked for the decoration. You could add fences on top of a block if they didn't obscure the color entirely and if they added to the build. There are a bunch of different block choices that we can use. And so I'm gonna go away, I'm going to basically draw a compass rose or at least start off the compass rose in this large area in here. It's going to be a pretty wide circle, but we're going to leave some space around the edges for future projects. And hopefully, once we come back, I'll be able to demonstrate a little bit about how each block prevents mobs from spawning here. 
Hey folks, welcome back, and this is the progress on the Nether Hub Compass so far. It is slow going, but it's going really, really well. And to be honest, the compass design in here really wasn't all that difficult to figure out. All I needed to do was make sure that I could make a circle with a radius that was a little bit smaller than the one I had built for the walls of the nether hub around the outside and then from there I decided to move in three blocks and create some seven block high or seven block long I guess letters at the north south east and west points from there we figured out where the compass points were going to be pointing like directly down the middle of this center line that I still have here in the nether hub we moved all of those backwards to a kind of central section here where the lines kind of meet and those are isosceles triangles so they're triangles that have two equal size sides and then a shorter side across the bottom here and that basically provided the four points of the compass. From there, we worked out what the uh, the, the sort of points c coming out from the side would be. So the, the kind of 45 degree angles. And then in between those, we have these 22.5 degree angles, which were, let me tell you, a lot harder to figure out. But if you stand in the middle here, you can actually figure out where the compass points are going to look just by using the coordinate data and checking that against the... Uh, where it says facing north and those those numbers that are moving around next to that are basically the degrees of rotation that you have depending on which direction you're facing. So if I'm looking, let's say over here, I'm looking at 22.5 in that direction, then that's roughly the spot at which we need to have our, you know, our line, our north northeast line, for example, pointing in that direction. Although I think that's the south southwest direction now that I'm looking at it but anyway this is uh, this is the central compass and it's all looking really nice right now as you can see there are no mob spawns happening on the compass area itself and that is because for the most part we have kept the floor of stone slabs although I am probably going to swap all of these out for sandstone <laughs> weird though it sounds and much as that is going to set me back in terms of the carpet that I've placed around here I really think sandstone is going to be a better background now we have laid out all of this grey and white material around here. I really feel like sandstone is going to help that stand out and feel like a, a more kind of exploratory um, kind of feel, I guess, for the for the compass. I think it's going to look nice as, as though it was on a kind of old parchmenty kind of map. I feel like sandstone is the closest slab material we can use to get that effect in here. As for the rest of it, it is pretty much all done with carpets. And even in the sections where I've used concrete powder around the outside, Side, I have lined those with wool carpets. Basically, you're looking for the materials that you can acquire in greatest quantities. And right now, that automatic sheep farm that I have that's farming all of the different colors of wool is providing quite a large amount of wool. Even though it's been making wool for, for, for quite some time now, I still needed to go and turn all of my string and stuff into wool so that I could have enough white carpets to fill out the rest of this area. So that took a fair bit of time and around the outside here we have the different colors. We have gray wool, we have light gray and all of that is topped off with carpets. Now the great thing about using wool and carpets is that at a glance you would not be able to tell that this was actually a wool block with a carpet on top of it and that is because, I mean for a start we've got the additional surrounding of the carpets here adding one kind of layer of pixels to the bottom here so if you add one on the top there it still looks like a 16 pixel tall block right but aside from that if you look at the top obviously the textures are going to be the same and you can't see the joins the carpet texture flows seamlessly with the wool texture because they are the same texture so you really don't have to worry about those things standing out as far as the darker colors go it's quite obvious if you look very very closely at this that the black wool here is not the same texture as the black concrete powder but considering we're going to be standing on this walkway and probably running around a little bit out here it really isn't all that noticeable if you're just like looking at it at a glance from here for example you can't necessarily tell that there is carpet on top of that but there is when it comes to creating your own nether hub as far as spawn proof blocks go there are an even greater variety of them in minecraft 1.14 now that we have access to additional types of slabs for example andesite slabs are a thing and mossy stone brick if that isn't really to your taste you can use stuff like trap doors as we have done in the creeper farm to make sure that an area is spawn proof and that gives you another texture to work with besides just the spruce slabs you might otherwise be using not to mention that stuff like stairs is even a non-spawnable block because it's not a full block it's a block that has kind of part of it missing and therefore doesn't really count as a spawnable space if your design allows for it you could even use something like buttons to 
prevent a block from being spawnable and then you could use whichever solid blocks you wanted as long as you were okay with the buttons being there as ornaments. And last but definitely not least, if you want to use solid blocks throughout your nether hub design, all you really need to do is coat them in a layer of glass one block up. And obviously with a build like this, that's going to take an awfully long time because that is a lot of glass. And I actually want to use grey glass as the floor of this place so that I can look down on the compass from above and see all of this stuff without all of these lines of prismarine blocks in the way. And so I'm going to have to smelt up a lot of sand, and I did not have time to do that in order to prepare this episode for you guys. So I'm sorry you don't get to see that in its finished form quite yet. But even so, you have the option of using glass, and make sure you layer it with only one block space in between a solid block and the glass block, just to make sure that zombie pigmen can't spawn in there, because they need a two block high space in order to spawn, and that's what's going to allow them to spawn in the first place. So if you absolutely can't compromise on the types of blocks that you are using to decorate your nether hub, adding glass on top of them will prevent anything from spawning in there because most things in the nether will need a two block high space in order to spawn. While we're here, it's also worth remembering that if we've taken out an area of a nether fortress, which we have in the case of this hub, there are several areas here which are technically part of a nether fortress's hitbox. And I would show you the outlines using bounding box outline reloaded if I could, but I don't think it's been updated for this version of Minecraft quite yet. It is going to be possible if you place down any solid blocks within the hitbox of one of the corridors of a nether fortress for nether fortress mobs to spawn which means blazes and wither skeletons not only that but you'll also get some regular overworld skeletons spawning in there as well from time to time so that is best avoided and if you're working within the bounding box of a nether fortress it is very much worth bearing that in mind but even if you wanted to keep a natural nether fortress look if you had one but you wanted to spawn proof it you could just use nether brick slabs which are going to be unspawnable for any fortress mobs regardless even though they are made out of nether brick which is a block that fortress mobs will actually look for to spawn on you don't have to worry about it if you've built it out of slabs and that is bottom half slabs by the way because if you're building this on the top half slabs technically that counts as like the surface of the top of a full block and it is still possible for mobs to spawn on that at least i'm pretty certain it is but as you can see right now we're getting no spawns in here whatsoever despite the fact that the light levels are all over the place the nether portal is generating a little bit of light but the majority of this is dark and in either case zombie pigmen can spawn in any light level which is how how come you get them spawning around lava lakes around the edges of the nether and areas where there is glowstone in the ceiling that is casting light all around it? It doesn't matter to zombie pigmen, which is why getting them out of your nether hub is such a challenge. And it is nice to have a pigman free nether hub. I'm looking forward to laying another row of slabs around the outside to get rid of those guys who linger on the walls because it's just nice to not have to worry about accidentally hitting one and then having the whole nether come after you, even though the bugs related to that have now been fixed in this most recent version. It's kind of nice to have to avoid that problem altogether and you can do that using some spawn proof blocks like carpets slabs glass and anything that will prevent something from being a full standard opaque block and that's going to be it for this episode of the Minecraft Survival Guide, folks. I hope you have enjoyed this look at how the Nether Hub is coming together, and I hope it's given you some ideas for spawn-proofing your own Nether Hub to create a slightly safer space for yourself in the Nether. That's going to be it for today. Thank you so much for watching the Minecraft Survival Guide. My name has been Pixel Riffs. Don't forget to leave a like on this episode if you enjoyed it. Subscribe if you want to see more, and I'll see you guys soon. Take care. Bye for now.